Hey guys, I'm Cindy Palm. I hope you enjoy the highlights from Tesla's battery day. If you like what you see while you're watching, don't forget to give it a like. Well, I mean, this is definitely a new approach. We got the, the Tesla drive-in movie theater, basically. And there's a little bit more, in addition to the battery stuff, we got a little few extras uh, as well. So I think uh, you'll really like what we have to say on batteries. <laughs> The, 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 battery, the battery stuff we're going to talk about is, is truly revolutionary uh, and essential to, uh, to Tesla's goal. There are problems uh, as you make cells larger. And this was the challenge that our team uh, set our sights on to overcome. And we did. We came up with this tabless architecture that maybe you've heard about. The distance that that electron has to travel you know, is, is just much less. So this is a big deal. People that really know cells, this is a massive breakthrough. And so when we put it all together and go to our new 80 millimeter length, 4680 we call this uh, new cell design. We get five times the energy with six times the power and enable 16% range increase, just form factor alone. And you can see nickel is the cheapest and the highest energy density and that's why increasing nickel is a goal of ours and really everybody's in the energy and in, in the uh, battery industry. But one of the reasons why cobalt is even used at all is because it is a very stable bookshelf. And the challenge with going to pure nickel is stabilizing that bookshelf with only nickel. And that's what we've been working on with our high nickel co cathode development, which has zero cobalt in it, leveraging novel coatings and dop novel coatings and dopants. Uh, we can get a 15% reduction in cathode dollar per kilowatt hour. Yeah. <laughs> Big deal. The, the, the front and rear of the car is a single piece. Um, and then that, that, that then inter the interfaces to uh, what we call it the structural battery, where the battery for the first time will have dual use. Uh, the battery will both have the use as an energy device and as structure. This, this is absolutely the way things are done. In, in the early days of, of aircraft, they would carry the fuel tanks as cargo. Then somebody said, hey, what if we just make the wing tanks, uh, what, what if we just make the fuel tank in wing shape? So. Uh, all modern airplanes, the fuel tank, your, your wing is just a, a, a fuel tank in wing shape. This is absolutely the way to do it. Range increase, we're unlocking up to 54% increase in range for our vehicles and energy density for our energy products. 56% uh, reduction in dollars per kilowatt hour at the battery pack level and a 69% reduction in investment per gigawatt hour, which is the true enabler when we talk back about how do we achieve this scale problem here. Now, to be clear, it will take us probably a year to 18 months to start realizing these, uh, these advantages, and probably to fully realize the advantages, probably it's about three years or thereabouts. I mean, long term, we, you know, we want to try to uh, replace about you know, uh, at least 1% of the total vehicle fleet on Earth, which is about 2 billion vehicles. So long term, we want to try to make about 20 million vehicles a year. Uh, what does it mean for what does this, what does this mean for our future products? Uh, so, uh, we, you know, we're, we're confident that long term we can design and, and manufacture a, a, a compelling twenty five thousand dollar electric vehicle. Um, so, you, you know, this this uh, this has always been our dream from the beginning of the company. I even like wrote a blog piece about it um, because um, you know our first car was was an expensive sports car, and and then a then it was like slightly less expensive sedan, and then finally it's sort of a, I don't know, mass market premium, but uh, you know, like the Model 3 and Model Y. Um, but it really, it was always our goal to try to make an affordable electric car. And um, I think probably, uh, w w yeah, like I said, about, about three years from now, uh, we're confident we can make a very, com uh, uh, very compelling $25,000 electric vehicle uh, that's also fully autonomous. How does the ICE industry look like for, uh, in the future? Uh, well, I don't think there will be an ice industry long term. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, I guess there might be like a few things that are like it's a like curious thing. Like, I mean, I'm pr there's still like some steam engines made somewhere, uh, but like they're just basically sort of quirky collector's items. And, I mean, that will be the future of the internal combustion engine car. You know, we really try to tell these companies, hey, you really need to do this, or you won't exist in the future. Uh, but they don't believe it, you know. <laughs> so I mean, we've tr we've talked until we're blue in the face. Uh, <laughs> what what are we supposed to do? Um, um, but we really are hopeful that other companies will also uh, do what we're doing, and that will make the a sustainable future come sooner.
basically Tesla uh, is, is aiming to be the, the best at manufacturing of any company on Earth. Uh, this is the thing that's actually most important in the long run. I think, um, you know, just from a company standpoint and, and from basically um, achieving sustainability as fast as possible, uh, but I think also for long-term competitiveness, um, eventually every, every car company will have long-range electric cars. Um, I, you know, eventually every company will have autonomy, I think, but not every company will be uh, great at, at manufacturing. Uh, Tesla will be absolutely head and shoulders above anyone else in manufacturing. That is our goal. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Cindy Palm. So what did you think about Tesla's big day? Did it live up to your expectations? I will be doing a full story about the significance of Battery Day and what this means for the future of the auto industry. So you can watch out for that in the coming days. A big shout out as always goes out to my patrons, including my Patreon producer, Nino Johnny. I will see you all very soon. Thank you.